Um, now, I'll, I'll skip over this fairly briefly, but, in, but this is one of the things that Monica Kaiser was referring to. Um, you, know, you, you can use poverty rates in international comparisons that are usually relative. They're set at percentages of median household income adjusted for household size. Um, measured at 50% of the median, New Zealand is almost exactly at the OECD average. Uh, and as she pointed out, it has very low poverty rates amongst people over 65, but higher than average poverty rates amongst um, younger people and particularly amongst uh, children. Um, but these sort of poverty rates have one basic problem, is, is that it depends where you draw the line. Now, New Zealand has more people, more households between 50 and 60 percent of the median than any other OECD country, uh, whereas Australia has more households between 40 and 50 percent of the median than any other OECD country. So what happens is that in Australia, um, there are a lot of people just below the poverty line, whereas in New Zealand, there are a lot of people just above the poverty line. So the actual differences are not necessarily that great, but on a poverty line you get, um, you get a very different picture. So we have uh, apparently 35% you know, of elderly people in Australia in poverty, uh, whereas you have 2%, but in fact you know, they're just below that poverty line and a lot of your people are just above that poverty line. Um, that's just an illustration of what I've just said. Now, if you look at benefit recipiency, um, this is 2004, so it doesn't go up to 2009. Um, and this is benefit recipiency amongst people of working age. Uh, Monica Kaiser referred to these figures. Uh, and they're broken down, they're color coded by um, different types of benefits. Um, and in fact, even though these are people below 65, the dark blue bar at the bottom is people who are actually getting retirement pensions. Um, so you can, the point I made before is that in some countries, you'll, in some European countries, a lot of working age people are actually retired. Uh, you know, um, some of them are 63, but in France some of them are 56. You know, so it's sort of like uh, a main reason, one of the main reasons for, um, well, amongst people of working age in most countries, the two biggest benefits are early retirement and incapacity benefits. Um, now, New Zealand um, uh, in 2004, in terms of the percent of the working age population in receipt of income replacement benefits, so we're, we're not talking about family payments or housing benefits, uh, we're talking about benefits to replace income, uh, New Zealand had the third lowest for the countries that could be measured. You couldn't measure it for all countries. Um, and, uh, but obviously a substantial part were um, uh, incapacity benefits and loan parent benefits. Now, um, if you compare 1980 to 2004, um, in 1980 New Zealand had by far the lowest level of benefit recipiency in the OECD to the extent that you could calculate it for these countries. So while you still have, in relative terms, a relatively low level of benefit recipiency, it has increased more rapidly than any other country. Um, some other countries have had bigger a absolute increases, but not proportionately. So in New Zealand, this is basically a doubling in the proportion of people of working age on benefits. And you know, if you go back earlier, you obviously uh, get a much bigger increase as well. So the thing about New Zealand is not that the benefit recipiency level is very high, it's just that it's, it's increased very rapidly compared to other countries. Um, but one of the areas where um, uh, New Zealand and Australia, um, New Zealand's not as bad as Australia or the United Kingdom on this measure, is about um, the concentration of joblessness. As Monica Kaiser mentioned, uh, New Zealand has one of the highest levels of employment if you look at in aggregate of all OECD countries. Um, Australia's, in terms of overall employment, was also in 2005 one of the highest levels, not as high as New Zealand. In Australia, a lot of that's due to part-time employment and particularly due to very high employment rates amongst people under 25. Um, and undoubtedly, relatively speaking, Australia has moved up the rankings and I think probably New Zealand has stayed relatively high in the rankings because uh, sort of one of the countries that had the highest employment rates was Iceland, and I don't think it has anymore. Um, 
But so what we have is in aggregate, in total, lots of people in jobs, but the people who aren't in jobs are highly concentrated in households where nobody's in paid employment. Now this is a measure of what's called polarisation. You, you, you say, let's, I won't go too much into the details, but I can later on. Uh, you predict how much joblessness there should be um, based on the total level of employment um, and you compare it with the actual level of joblessness amongst, this is amongst families with children. Um, and what you find, say for example, at one extreme, Italy has very low employment amongst people of working age, but all of the people who aren't employed live in households with somebody who is employed, or virtually that's what's going on now. Uh, whereas in the United Kingdom uh, and Australia, uh, Norway and New Zealand, the opposite occurs. That basically, um, uh, I'll refer to Australia because I know the numbers off the top of my head and I can't remember for New Zealand, it's not quite the same. But um, in Australia, about 28% of the working age population are jobless. Now that means that, 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 it, that, means that they are not either unemployed or not participating in the labour market. So this includes uh, partnered women looking after children or people caring for elderly relatives. Um, so it's the total level of joblessness. Now in Australia, half of those people live in households where there's nobody else in employment. Uh, in the UK, it's an even higher proportion. So what's unusual about Australia and New Zealand to a somewhat lesser extent but, but, but still it is unusual, is that the people who are jobless live in households where there's nobody else in employment, whereas in European countries that's much less common. Um, I'm just conscious I should finish in about five minutes, if that's okay. Um, now, uh, my, this is a comparison of, you know, if you look at the Gini coefficient for market income, so what people get from earnings, from investments and self-employment and so on, and private pensions, compared to the distribution of disposable income, um, this shows how much taxes and the benefit system reduce inequality. Now, what you get, um, and this is, uh, is that um, in Australia the tax and benefit system reduce inequality it, it's the fifth highest reduction in the OECD. Um, New Zealand is not so well placed, it's, but it's still just above the OECD average. Um, um, so Australia reduces inequality by uh, nearly as much as uh, Sweden or Denmark, but it has a substantially higher level of disposable income inequality. So Sweden, uh, Denmark has a Gini coefficient of about 0.22, whereas Australia has it of but point three. So what that means is, is that most of that difference is in the distribution of market income. And so my, the, the reason why Nordic countries have low inequality is twofold. They have effective tax and benefit systems at reducing inequality, but they have substantially lower market income inequality to start off with. And the reason for that is they have high employment, um, and uh, relatively narrow distributions of wages, um, and that employment is more equally shared across households. Um, and I think, you know, in terms of trying to achieve lower inequality and lower poverty, it's that combination, it's the combination of high employment, relatively compressed earnings distributions and redistribution that gets them there. And you, you, you can't do it just by one instrument. It's the sort of, it's the, it's the total combination. Um, now, if, if you look at, um, uh, this is just another way of, um, this looks at how, much, how effective different countries are per unit of spending. Um, and uh, New Zealand and Australia are amongst the most, per unit of spending, are amongst the most efficient countries in the OECD. That, and that's because we, direct money to poor people, much more so than other countries. Um, but we don't spend as much as other countries, so we're less effective, but we're more efficient. And that's an interesting choice. Now